This is Charlie. Charlie Garcia. It's not my it's not my real name, but then again, I'm not a real journalist. Although I used to play one in college <laughs> because I, I got a journalism degree. Uh, that I never used. Until now. Not really. I'm just Googling a bunch of stuff. But anyways, this is my new podcast. Welcome. It is called Dying on a Hill. And it is about every marketing or advertising, PR, or business decision that someone committed a little too hard to. Basically, the whole point of it is I want to go into a bunch of uh, marketing campaigns and see if, one, they're as good as we remember, or two, if they're even worth it. So, joining me on this first episode is my good friend, Trevor Martin. Oh, hello, Charlie Garcia. Oh, Oh, man, I don't like that name. You made it for yourself. I know. Now I got (laughs) to stick with it. It's already on some scripts. (laughs) Nah, yeah. Every episode going forward, yeah. I'm afraid you've dug yourself this grave. Shit. Mr. (laughs) Garcia. You know, (laughs) some people hate the name they're given, but not a lot of people hate the name they've chosen. (laughs) i'm one of the rare few of that club (laughs) that's like a movie poster slogan (laughs) he didn't want it but he picked it anyways (laughs) he gave it to himself (laughs) it's like yeah it's it's a picture of me and like an old like an old maid's like colonial outfit being like just like hugged <laughs> wait why the old man colonial uh, <laughs> like that's just what i imagine with the tone of that trailer <clears throat> yes okay so we're talking we're talking that kind of movie i yeah. see what you're it's, saying it's yeah. uh it's trying to win an oscar in 1996 mm. mm-hmm. in 96 <laughs> yeah <laughs> some color purple uh oh god what was it the red violin that kind oh, of oh wow movie? <laughs> yeah yeah of course yeah <laughs> All right, I'll roll with it. This is the Red Violin of Podcast. English, the English Patient, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hosted by the English Patient himself, Charlie Ray Garcia. Ray Fiennes, wait. <laughs> <laughs> now, Trevor. Oh, yes? <laughs> do you want to know why 1984 won't be like 1984? Of course. That's why I'm here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, just imagine yourself. It's, uh, I don't know, it's like... I guess it's like 1984. Okay, okay. I'm there. I'm there. Yeah, you're there. You is 1984. <laughs> you're watching Super Bowl 28. Hell yeah. It is the uh, Los Angeles, but now Oakland, soon to be Las Vegas Raiders. Okay, right. Versus the Washington Football Club. <clears throat> thank you. Yes, you're, thank you. Yep. Not going not gonna to go there. Great. And, you know, you're watching the halftime and everything. Mm-hmm. When... This little ditty comes up. So for everyone listening to this, there's a a bunch of sort of just people in gray jumpsuits walking towards this big screen. This uh, guy with glasses is saying how great everything is going to be when it's all pure. It's a bunch of skinheads. It's a bunch of digital shit flashing on the screen. All the while, there is this blonde uh, athlete with a hammer running down an aisle with a bunch of like security guards chasing her. And now she's swinging that. Swinging that hammer, throwing it with vigor, <clears throat> and uh, killing Big Brothers. <laughs> yeah, right. Whoa! <laughs> oh. <laughs> have you now? Have you ever seen that? Yes, a long time ago, Got it. but not in 1984. <laughs> I, I know you asked me to put myself in 1984. <laughs> this is not me saying I was in 1984 and I saw that. Now, like I was in like I was in second grade, I think, when I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, and that's interesting because one of the rumors, or one of like the one of the, I guess the rumors about this commercial that people get wrong is that it only aired once during the Super Bowl. And then oh. it never aired again. Oh. And so a lot of people thought that this was like a brilliant move by Apple. Mm-hmm. N- no. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to go into that. <laughs> well, especially back in the day, if they didn't do that, then it'd be like, you see that Apple commercial? And it's like, no. And you're like, okay, well, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, and that's kind of part of the narrative. You know, mm, people, yes, they, yes. They, it kind of became a hot thing that people talked about and it got news coverage. It really became like a pop culture, like touchstone. Um, but so it's considered one of the best 
like I guess commercials of all time. It's mm-hmm. like it is it's been named the best commercial of all time many times. Wow. But my But like why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looking back on it from now, it's sort of like, you know, okay, I get it. We've seen this sort of thing before. It, but yeah, it's how kind many of things? like if you it's like if you're you know, it could be a thing of like if you're listening to Robert Johnson and you're like, this isn't anything. Sure. Yes. Right. And you're right. like, well, <laughs> <laughs> now. Yeah. You need to think about what came before it, which was not this. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to go into some script reading parts. That's, <gasps> that's, how, that's how this is. Ooh. It's not just a free flowing conversation. Ugh. There's going to be some nice little factoids. Nice. Like oh. I said, I'm not a journalist, <laughs> but I played one in college. <laughs> Factoids make me horny, baby. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Just ASMR. <laughs> ASMR factoids. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I'm going to cut with these scissors. <laughs> Did you know that scissors originated? <laughs> <laughs> New podcast. I love it. <laughs> By the 1980s, ads on TV were beginning to be seen as a valid form of pop culture. McDonald's had itself a few touchstones. Uh, like, I'd like to buy a world of Coke. A Coke. Oh, I'd like to buy a world of Coke. <laughs> and you deserve a break today campaign. There was all in the 70s and they were huge hits. So it's not like advertising was like this thing that no one ever considered. People knew that ads had to be entertaining and had to be emotional. But all, one thing that all these commercials have in common is that they are tragically, like tragically about the product <laughs> mm. here's an example right here uh pepsi challenge <gasps> yep pepsi challenge from 1983 so I, I tried pulling a bunch of commercials from around the era <laughs> it's just like it's like they're at a state fair or a parade <laughs> and they're all drinking pepsi and they're having a good time they're just... color-coded soldiers <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the pepsi revolution yeah yeah <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So that was like super about Pepsi. And here is a Ford Ranger commercial. A Ranger just appeared on like a cartoon, like backlot drawing. And now on that same like backlot, it's just rolling over a bunch of blocks. Of concrete. Giant over rocks. <laughs> and like little like outlines of the design are just falling in. Apparently it holds three people. It just put three men like <laughs> bloop, 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 right in the front. <laughs> and it's just like, hey, look at this fucking, look at these things the fucking truck can do. <laughs> look at what this truck can do. It can hold all the men that you want. Uh, I'm only one, men two here. other men. Yeah. <laughs> The, my favorite part of that commercial is the rocks because it means that somebody was like, all right, Ed, it's your job to put all the rocks on the on the street <laughs> strategically placed. Ed, you know, when we got here and there weren't any rocks, I thought you really dropped the ball. <laughs> but God dang it, if those cinder blocks weren't going to become the rocks. <laughs> you got us again. <laughs> you got a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> and here is a Sony Walkman commercial. So it's just a guy taking a cassette out of a jewel case. You know, remember cassettes? <laughs> oh. And now he's painstakingly putting the Walkman together. He, he's assembling the Walkman right. into the jewel case. I got to tell you, that is great. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's like it's about the product. Yes. It's, it's, yes. It's totally about the product. Product is front and center. And so that's why people remember that one so much. Like it, it was one of the first ones to have, uh, you know, high, high production value. Mm-hmm. It was it didn't feature anything. It was just this like hyperbolic metaphor for. Yeah, the I product. never saw a damn computer anywhere. <laughs> it was on her T-shirt. Oh, it was come a, on. it was literally a outline. It was like little black lines on her tank top. Well, and like this is 1983. So people are watching the Super Bowl yeah. on TVs that would be too small for a child's room in America today. <laughs> yeah, and I couldn't when we were watching it on your huge 130 inch TV in your backyard by the pool. I had to bring that thing home from someone's house because it's like a hand me down. They're like, we're throwing this away. Yeah. I had to bring that in my like 
Honda Coupe. Oh, I thought you were going to say your Ford Ranger. (laughs) (laughs) Me and my two men friends. (laughs) I mean, there were some rocks in the way, but luckily we had a Ford Ranger. That's right. The TV wasn't damaged. (laughs) But yeah, even on your TV, I couldn't couldn't see that it was outlined there. Like... All right. So it, it broke a lot of molds in that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to. All right. So I got to <laughs> have some like little Steve Jobs, the Apple stuff out of the way because it was an Apple commercial. So mm. I have to give context there. Sure. But, you know, we're going to go into a lot of like the marketing stuff for this. So got to get the, like there's a lot of Steve Jobs like shit out there. And I'm just not interested in it because like he's one of those guys that like you can hear anything about and you're like, oh, I believe it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Steve Jobs sleeps underwater and is friends with the Swamp Thing. Steve yeah. Jobs is still alive. <laughs> is that out there? I'll bet it is I don't know somewhere. If yeah, Tupac's out there, right? Yeah, I know he's out there. He's definitely out there. <laughs> All, right. All right, so Steve Jobs and company—they started out in a little tiny garage, and then they eventually had a big hit when they released the Apple II, which sold six million units at around a thousand two hundred and ninety-eight dollars, which is roughly two point five thousand dollars today. <laughs> For a computer? As for the yeah, that was for the most popular computer in America. I didn't know that that for some cost time that much. Yeah, it was released in 1977. <laughs> oh man! And uh, the Apple II is often credited with creating the home market for computers. Literally, like no one had computers in their home because it was only a, it was a hobbyist thing. It was like you would go and you'd literally buy a box and then you'd piece together a mainframe and ram ports and all that shit like people do with gaming computers now yes yeah. except you would have to go to like conventions to get the parts because there was nowhere to buy these fucking parts wow so you were buying them off of people that like stole them from work and, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and apple II kind of changed that because they were like hey we're gonna give you this like sort of basic thing and you can port it like you can put shit in it and expand on it and stuff and that's kind of why they went from 1977 to you know 19 basically 1983 being the number one computer but the, like i'm i'm working on a lenovo yogo right now oh and of course. it is three years old and it is already <laughs> such a piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i can't even imagine like people buying the same computer for that now granted a lot of it is like updates and shit the way you have like which is kind of indicative of how they ran business now, which mm. is they just kept releasing little expansions for it. So like in the same year or the year before the Macintosh 2, they released the final Apple II. It was like Apple II CE. And oh. it was basically like a fucking great computer. It was like the it was like the swan song because Apple II was set up as uh, Steve Wozniak and like his buddies and yeah. stuff. And so it was his team. And Steve Jobs wasn't necessarily a part of it at a certain point. And, he, I've, you know, there, there's a lot of shit between them yeah. and, like, how they felt about each other and all that shit. There's one thing that's really undeniable. Steve Wozniak is one of the best friends ever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, if you become that man's friend, he will, like, he's, he's what I call, like, a rock fight friend. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. He, he'll come up. I don't know if Steve Jobs deserved a friend like that. <laughs> like the kids in It? Well, they'll just yeah. throw rocks at the bullies? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wozniak was one of those loser kids. <laughs> yeah, he was the fat one. <laughs> who just stayed fat, unlike, you know, in Jerry O'Connell. Can we talk about it? Can we talk about it? <laughs> Subliminal fat shaming through sequels. <laughs> but what happened is after they released the Apple II, they released this thing called the Lisa. Mm. Now, the Lisa was an important computer because it was the first computer to have a, what, what's called a graphic user interface, which is every computer we use now. Oh. The problem, and it also had a mouse. It was the first computer to have a mouse. The Lisa was? Yeah. Oh. Problem was, uh, they probably stole both of those. <laughs> From who? Uh, Xerox. <laughs> Fucking Xerox. <laughs> Whatever. They deserve it. They didn't make any commercials. That, that run with the Pepsi commercials. <laughs> and, and the Lisa was $10,000 a unit. Good it was It was too expensive. Yeah, yeah. Because the technology, even though it seems so trivial now, the technology back then was cutting edge enough that mm-hmm. you know, they were like, this is going to be a pricey fucking thing. Because, as, as you'll find out, marketing costs money. <laughs> so that money's got to come from somewhere. Yeah. And if you got a bunch of fucking failures racked up on one campaign, mm-hmm. like 
the truth is people commit to spending about as much money as they spend on the rest of their company sometimes. Uh, just on marketing? Pepsi spends $1.6 billion on marketing in 1996. God. <laughs> so it's gone up since then. Exactly. Man. Now that things are digital, like the billions and billions and billions of dollars being spent. Um, and, and, you know, that all drives the price of a product up. Because it's basically you make it and then you got to charge twice of that. And then if you advertise for that, you got to tr- charge like twice that. So it like it. The one thing I like about digital and I guess one thing I kind of regret about globalism is that it drove prices down so much mm-hmm. that it actually does make sense to do a lot of the shit on your on your own. Mm-hmm. But back then you couldn't like you literally could not uh, buy airtime on TV unless you had contacts at an agency who had a relationship with that network already Mm -hmm. it was as gatekeeper as it could fucking be like there's a lot of similarities between entertainment and advertising and there's this really interesting thing about uh, i'll get to it later but yeah anyways i'm getting sidetracked yeah (laughs) i'm I'm getting sidetracked and i told you i wasn't gonna go into apple (laughs) (laughs) not to get into apple because we fast forward so the lisa 2 was ten thousand (laughs) dollars but you know that was a huge failure for them yes so it's 1984. <laughs> it's 1983. Yes. This computer just fucking failed. And they do not have a successor to the wildly popular Apple II. And IBM is on its way. <clears throat> so IBM's shares at the time were $30. Mm-hmm. Apple's shares were $0.50. Cents. Oh, fudge. IBM had considerably more money than them, and everyone knew it. And everyone knew as soon as IBM wanted to get into the computer space... It was going to be fucking like cutthroat. So was this sort of like a last, not to bring it back, I mean, bring it back to the Super Bowl, a Hail Mary, like a last ditch Hail Mary yes. pass? They needed to take a huge fucking swing. Wow. <laughs> and that's what the lady did yeah. right into the TV. And look at, and so here's how bad shit was going to get. Uh, here's from the New York Times. Uh, this is a Seymour. <laughs> it's from like 1970, like it was 1983 three or something so i don't know how the new york times sounded back then was it, was it cokey <laughs> probably, probably cokey i was gonna say probably crinkly if you like crinkle up the paper probably sounds about the same <laughs> all right you hear that? oh that's a fun fact <laughs> that's a, that's a good that's a good paper ash good paper crinkling boy yeah so you can you can quote me on that page wrinkle <laughs> <laughs> all right seymour marin owner of computer Works store in westport connecticut oh sure couldn't wait to start carrying IBM's new personal computer in the fall of 1981. The product was destined for success, he felt, and would be a strong addition to any computer store's product line. What, what Mr. Marin didn't anticipate, however, was that the IBM computer would come to dominate his sales so much that it made him nervous. What? Right now, it's the bulk of my business. Overwhelmingly, said the dealer, who is trying to push Apple computers to counteract IBM's influence. <laughs> One does not want to have one vendor or one customer dominate one's business. Any dealer who is not concerned with that is out of his gourd. I think that guy sounds like he's smart. Yes. This is the most reasonable small businessman I've ever heard of. What an amazingly smart man. <laughs> he's like, I don't want to be a fucking Apple store. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. He's thinking, I don't even want to be a fucking IBM store. I want to be my store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder how much of it is just personal pride. Yeah. Of like, I want everyone to know it's Artie's or whatever his name is. <laughs> Not IBM. Seymour Marin says. <laughs> oh, God. No, if my name was Seymour Marin's or, I don't know, Charlie Garcia, I would want my store to be known as an IBM store. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> All right. And it goes on to basically just say that, yeah, IBM is was a monster and Man. everyone knew it. And as soon as they got into the market, it Apple was like, fuck, we are fucked. So the only way they decided back then, the only way they can compete with personal computers made by, you know, just bigger companies who can afford better parts and cheaper parts and all that shit was to appeal to rich like richer people oh. and and be like hey this is more expensive because it's higher quality mm-hmm. the thing is you have to spend a lot of money to convince those people <laughs> <laughs> so that makes your product more expensive so it's the the price of it is not justified by quality it's it's justified by the in, immense advertising budget we've got an expensive product we're going to sell to people that can uh, that can afford it okay but we're going to have to spend a lot of money in order to be able to get them to want to buy it. Okay, but that's going to make the product even more expensive. Okay. (laughs) 
and uh, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna start loading this one. I think this will be the last. I think this will be the last commercial I show for a minute. <laughs> one <laughs> whole did... minute. <laughs> <laughs> Count it out. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna load that <laughs> while I say my other little my other little spear. This one is worth. This one's very much worth watching, though. I just, it's it's gonna make your heart happy. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I got a Grinch heart. That's those. That's a tall order, Mr. Garcia. Uh-huh. So things were bad, but there wasn't a problem with their advertising, they thought. They thought their advertising was good. They had been working with this company called Chiat Day. Now, Chiat Day is still their marketing company to an extent. They've had some ups and downs and falling outs. Uh, Apple's bringing a lot of their marketing in-house. So really, it's... This marketing is this weird thing where it can kind of it kind of is like it exists between two companies and where those companies share the responsibility. It, it's different for every company. Hmm. Some companies are like, hey, we're going to tell you guys what to do. And other companies are like, hey, we need to do this thing. Figure it out. Wow. So okay. like, it, it can it can be that white. It can be micromanaging as fall fuck mm-hmm. and you're just a button pusher or you can basically be given the keys to a Ferrari. Man. Uh, you know, the higher things go, the more button micromanagey stuff there is. But, you know, but, so relationships with with companies and marketing agencies, it is like a marriage. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of a lot of marketing people are stressed out because Aww. it's like they have this <laughs> they have this like brutal marriage between their company or their account and their client that yeah. they're constantly trying to maintain. And their wives or husbands. A- and yeah, and then they have to marriages. go home yeah. and like and try and be a functioning adult. <laughs> <laughs> they go home. They go home to a husband who's like, "You care more about Apple than you care about me and my son." <laughs> I I honestly, uh, I mean, I'm, hey, this is probably just the excuse she gave me so that I would go away. <laughs> but the excuse was, yeah, uh, she was too busy to date anyone, ah. and it was probably true because she worked on Volkswagen. The Beetle, the Beetle Super Bowl. Oh yeah, the, where it like drag raced around and shit, and the uh, little kid Star Wars, the little kid uh, Darth Vader opening the. Oh yeah. What year was that? Was that like? I think, uh, maybe not that one, but like the Beetle definitely. Okay. And so she was she, she was she would tell me she was working like eighty ninety hours, and now that I'm more into marketing. I believe it. Yeah, makes I sense believe now. it because I doubt I am. I I still don't believe I have ever worked as hard as she probably worked on that account. Sheesh. That's how hard that shit is. Damn. And it takes a really special person <laughs> <laughs> to do that. Yeah. You know, True. it's a very I mean, yeah. driven, focused type A, like not unbreakable because we're definitely breakable. Everybody, but breakable. we can pick ourselves up real fast. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I have seen. I've seen people cry. In meetings and then pull it together in like five seconds. Good <laughs> lord, dude. God. So, this is the commercial that Chiat Day made starring Kevin Costner Hell before yeah. Kevin Costner was Kevin Costner for the Lisa. Oh, really? This is before people, people knew who he was and all that. This was, I think, his first acting role. Wow. So, here it is. It's like a, it's a morning, you know, someone's riding a bike over the horizon. As we get closer, we see he has a dog <laughs> on a leash. Which is like fucking asshole. Yeah. Like, like that, that dog's hauling ass. It's get like a bike walking the dog, five dude. miles. I mean, it's a pit bull. It's got a lot of energy. Anyways, he just <laughs> went downtown. He was, he's in downtown Los Angeles and he's leaving his bike on a floor that a guy just mopped like a fucking prick. <laughs> like, oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for pausing it because we do need to talk about this. <laughs> All right. So like he's coming in like a, on a Saturday, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's there. Hey, Marty. Thanks for wiping the floor. I was going to put my fucking bike right in the middle of your mop yeah. bag. Hey, you watch my bike. I'm not going to lock it. You <laughs> yeah. lock this fucking building. Help. <laughs> If, if I come down here and the bike is stolen, I'm going to have you and your family taken out of this country. <laughs> so, you know, he's a nice guy. Yeah, nice guy. Nice guy. And he's uh, so he's walking into the office now. He has his dog. He's got his he's got his scarf around his fucking shoulders. Oh, I didn't See notice that. He's got the yacht rock like uh, scarf wrapped around. Anyways, he's got a good dog. <laughs> but the dog, a, a, good a good boy. Only <laughs> just two kinds of people. Wow. All right, so now he's settling down and he's on his computer. Those who use computers anymore. That dog. <laughs> and those who use apples.
He's so deep in thought. <laughs> Wow. So what if you didn't know that the name of the computer company was Apple? So 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 you were watching the commercial, it was like two kinds of people, those who use computers and those who use apples. And you're like, what? <laughs> that guy clearly was on a computer, not an apple. <laughs> oh, I get it. He's gonna have an apple for breakfast. For breakfast. I'll be home for breakfast. Heat up the apple. <laughs> there better be a tart waiting for me. <laughs> For love of the game. <laughs> oh, feel the dream. <laughs> Weird that he would always say that when he was frustrated before the movie was even pitched. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> what are you what are you looking at outside of your beachside condo there, Kevin Costner? Oh nothing, just a water world. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Shut your ass up. <laughs> so, you know, big production. Mm. Kevin Costner, so he he would become a star. He wasn't a star just yet. Can I say one thing too? And I, I and I promise I'll it'll I'll just just make the point and go. Was it uh, that he did not use the mouse the way a <laughs> human uses the mouse? It was not. But I'm so glad you pointed that out because it didn't even register in my head. But I think the fact because we talked about it, we mentioned it. But the fact that he had a dog, I huh. think, is huge. He was a nice guy because he had a... D yes! But we pointed out so many shitty things about this human. And yet, we at least love the dog. We That was a good boy. Yeah. Therefore, we are more invested in the product of like, well, you know, if the dog if the dog trusts the computer or yeah, something. Yeah, and it's like, hey, he's going to be home for <clears throat> breakfast. Maybe, maybe he just gets his shittiness out. He has to purge it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honest, he has to just let Lucy. the steam out every day. <laughs> and if he doesn't, he ends up, you know, killing a hobo. Oh, yeah. Or homeless person. You, or I, the guy you with the mop. <laughs> That's the fourth janitor this year. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Uh, so, this guy, Andy Hertzfeld, he mm -hmm. was a major contributor to uh, Apple in the early days. Um, he was a, let's say, I think he was literally just on the Apple team. He He's portrayed in the Steve Jobs movie as the guy that offers... Or no, the guy that does pay for Steve Jobs' daughter's college. Wow. Like another it, another rock fight friend. Yeah, yeah. He you could, I mean, it's in a movie, so who the fuck knows if that was true or not. Sure. Um, but he does seem like a really nice guy because I got this from a website called folklore.com, which is him just writing these really in depth like history of Apple. And just stuff that he's worked on and then just random stuff in the early days of tech because he wants it to be recorded for history because he thinks it's important. Like it's like saying that that's like that's like no one having a history of like Pluto or yeah. is, is, Pluto, is Pluto a person? I don't know. Socrates or something. Yeah. You know. Oh, <laughs> I, I literally thought that you meant the planet. <laughs> or satellite. I was like, wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Plato. Plato. I'm thinking of Plato. Oh Sorry. my God. Why didn't I why didn't I just roast your ass for that? Oh no. <laughs> ah, I got out of it. <laughs> uh, you can't hold me down. I'm moving. It's, like, it's like ew. <laughs> No, but seriously, I've been I've been uh, lotioning every day. It's making a difference. I have been trying to hold you down for a couple of days. <laughs> and finally, I squeezed out to make a podcast. <laughs> but I invited you back. Yeah, uh, I gotta hold you down before we're done recording. <laughs> so Andy writes, Chayat was compulsively innovative, brash, and irreverent. And this is uh, he's talking about the person Chayat. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jay Chiat. Uh, he was the founder of the company. Um, also, he writes that him and Steve Jobs had a really special relationship. But sex? Uh, yeah. And he says he was an innovator. He introduced a lot of customer relation techniques that are pretty obvious today, but allowing uh, like allowing clients to give feedback uh. and the task force approach, which means like I'm going to assemble a uh, an account manager, a graphic designer, a copywriter, and a logistics guy, and they're all going to work on your account. It's oh. like that. It's pretty. It's pretty normal these days. It's basically I'm going to make a fucking Power Ranger team for for every little monster. Yeah. You know. But you know, he was the first <laughs> person to do that because he's been advertising since like the fifties. Wow. Uh, and he was from Britain, and Britain actually was ahead of us in advertising 
for a while until our economy started to kick the shit out of Britain. So a lot of people from Britain moved over here mm, to they start their to, advertising. They wanted to work with Kevin Costner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but he did. <laughs> uh, yeah. The ultimate good boy. <laughs> But the thing is, him and Steve Jobs may have been friends because they were both kind of pricks. Mm. <laughs> um, Ch- Jay Chiat coined the phrase, good enough is not good enough. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. To the, yeah. To the said by every bad manager. Yes. Anyone has. A, I think I read that. And I wanted you on the podcast. <laughs> good enough is not good enough. Let's yeah. see. Who's a guest that's good enough? Uh, uh, how about Trevor Martin? <laughs> uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, one of his colleagues at the time uh, and eventual CEO. And then he would go on to do his own thing. But he's huge in advertising. Lee Clow, uh, which is just I, it's one of those names that's so either british or irish or something that you, it yeah. just sounds like it's european you can't pick it anywhere it's white as hell <laughs> it's waspy as hell yeah oh and my he goes, name's lee clow <laughs> i'm here to help with your advertising I think he was australian maybe. <laughs> yeah that was an australian accent <laughs> so uh he said you know they would push us to the edge and then challenge us to fly which oh means boy. he would put his he would put his employees in situations to fail constantly yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Sounds familiar. Yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of that, but oh man, you know it was a time. <laughs> but it made some good products, yeah, like the Lisa, <laughs> <laughs> which we so, all know. Of. <laughs> they knew they were going to stick with Chayate because also, like, I don't know, man. Like just to get like I I know I didn't want to play another commercial. <laughs> Well, it's been more than a minute. Yeah. You're more than entitled <laughs> to play another commercial. Because this one, but this one is, is the last one for a while uh, because it's, it's oh, really? truly awful. Ooh, it was a bad one? Yeah. It's for the Lisa. This is to show you how desperate they got trying to sell this fucking thing. Damn. They ended up dumping 10,000 units in somewhere between San Francisco and Sacramento. Like the in Atari games? Yep. Holy Somewhere. crap, Lois. And people try and look for it because there's, there's, there's fucking gold in the circuitry. Yes. So there have been like treasure hunter of sorts, but the problem is that is now one of the most overdeveloped like pipelines in America oh. going from Sacramento to San Francisco as San Francisco tr- stretches out to Sacramento. Sacramento is kind of stretching into San Francisco because they have a light rail there. So people are like, well, fuck it. I can be on a train for an hour. I'll live, you know, in Davis or some shit, you know? Man. So they're still out there and it's getting harder to find them. Yeah. I th- and I think, you know, they may have been buried. I, I, yeah. I, think, they, I think they may have been buried and then like <clears throat> built on top of. <laughs> oh, if they're under buildings. Oh, man. What if it was like Blue Streak? Where it's accidentally hidden, it's buried under a police station. You got to pretend to be a cop in order to get in. <laughs> to, to, to dig through 200 yards of garbage. <laughs> it's, Martin Lawrence is just covered in, in like, like pretty much it's like oil. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's real compacted. It's pro- There's methane. Like everyone in the police station is dead. Dead. Because <laughs> he's really so much toxic gap. Uh, uh, anyways, it's uh, just a shitty. I can't get it to work. It's just a shitty video, or maybe it is working. This music is terrifying. <laughs> no, right? And they showed that woman. Where, yeah. Like, what? Who is she? And who is. Trying, oh, there she is again. Like, who's trying to hurt her? Is she, <laughs> is she a ghost? Like, who? If you buy that computer, you're going to be haunted by this prom dress wearing <laughs> white woman with sunken eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so they're not going to they're not going to fire Chai at day, even though he made that. They did not make that. That's oh. what other people were making. <laughs> oh, good Lord. So, you know, you get that Kevin Costner video. Right. And then you get this. Yeah. You're going to keep. It's like, well, that's our fuck up, obviously. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> like one one thing I always tell people is I can't sell bread. Meaning if the thing you're giving me is something that everyone can get easily mm. and they kind of either don't care or they already have a very specific brand in mind. And like, unless you're selling me like something that competes with those guys, if you're just selling me like white bread, 
I can't fucking sell it. Sure. So that's probably a case of like, I can't sell white bread. I can't sell something that either no one wants or no one needs. Amateur. <laughs> fucking rookie. I know. Give me a loaf of bread. I'll sell it to everybody. <laughs> so, so, you know, like I said, oh, it, it cost $10,000. It was 2,700 units that were buried. <sighs> you know, that's a big fucking computer. Yeah. Um, And at 10,000 K, they couldn't blame him. So Jobs was fired. <laughs> what? Steve Jobs was fired. As From Apple, the CEO of Apple. He this was still, I didn't know. He was still with Apple. Oh, um, he <clears throat> he became was... the mop boy for the Saturday morning <laughs> Kevin Costner visits. <laughs> yeah, and so he was given the the he was he was given the Lisa in the last couple of years, and people think he kind of fucked it up because he basically added a bunch of expensive parts at the last minute that made it really expensive, and then uh, when he got and when that failed, he wanted to do the Mac. So he did the Mac too. Uh, let's see. And they he let was, him? Yeah. He was replaced by this guy named John Scully. Who, this is all so much fucking information. I am so sorry. <laughs> 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 there won't be a test after this. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so he was replaced by this guy named John Scully. John Scully was the head of Pepsi at one point. Uh, he was a very marketing focused CEO. He believed in the power of it. Um, I have a, I'm a, I have an episode later coming out about Pepsi. And Wonderful. one of their, their, their I mean, I'm sure I can string together what could be eventually some sort of audio book of, of things about the Cola Wars. There's enough information about them and there's enough shit that they did to merit. You no, know, there's books and books and books and books written on the thing. So that's something that I'm kind of always going to dip my toe into. The Cola Wars? The Cola Wars. Sweet. And so this guy was at the forefront of that. Great. He uh, actually innovated a thing called experiential marketing in a way. So... What it means is he gives people a, an experience and you film that and then you show that experience. Like as the Pepsi challenge? The, he thought of the Pepsi challenge. Motherfucker. Yeah. I thought it was Sammy Sosa all this time. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and, and, you know, and like the Pepsi <clears throat> challenge has like a lot of shit going for it because like basically Pepsi is sugarier. Mm-hmm. Um, so you like it if you taste a little bit of it. Yes. But Coke is something you'd rather taste a, a whole can of. And that's what people, that's why. I think that's why Pepsi is constantly spending money. Pepsi, Coca-Cola only spends like, I mean, in the year that I'm writing about, 1996, Coke only spent like $50 million. Not even a billion? Yeah, not including their Olympics. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Which, but they only paid a, a couple hundred million for it. Wow. Yeah. You know how much Pepsi in, in 1996 paid? For, now, Charlie, you the said li- there weren't going to be tests. No, okay. All right. <laughs> they paid $2 billion for the rights to license uh, Star Wars on their merchandise. Just Star Wars was $2 billion? Yep. <whistles> Holy was, fuck. Yeah, that's half as much as it sold for Disney. Oh, God. <laughs> that's how much money Pepsi spends. But that's a whole other I got to get a better job. <laughs> the year of 1996 is yeah. its own thing. <laughs> oh, man. So... What are they going to do, right? They, they're up against it. IBM's on its way. Oh, yes. They, they failed hard. Uh, they don't have any... They can't go to the Apple too well anymore. Uh, Steve Jobs has been fired. <laughs> uh, but, you know, he's still in charge of Macintosh, uh, the Macintosh 2 coming out. So, you know, he's like, fuck, I need this. I need this to be a success or I am out of here. Yeah. So he goes to Chai Day and he goes like, we need to fucking do this. What do you got? Now, there was a thing that they pitched earlier. <laughs> that commercial, they already pitched it to them for the Lisa. And there's nothing I've read that supports this, but I believe that Steve Jobs loved it so much that he gave up on the Lisa. Wait, loved what so much? The, the, the commercial. 1984 commercial? Yeah. I think he liked it so much that he was like, that fuck he the was Lisa. Like, we can make this for the Macintosh, and that's going to sell the Macintosh. Let's put let's let's make let's let's make the lisa do a bunch of really hard work yeah. in like making a gui and having a mouse and like doing all these things first let's make this shitty project fail yeah so that when i do my thing <laughs> oh. it will be cheaper <laughs> that's some iago ass bullshit and and like i have nothing to prove that sure but i think think that's it, what it happened. sounds kind of like our boy steve yeah and so they pitched it uh it's like here's why something won't be like something mm-hmm. or it's like mm-hmm. you know it's like 1984 uh 
Which is funny because they didn't pay any licensing rights for 1984. Really? Yeah. And uh, oh well, because <laughs> you can't prove that they were referencing the book. They don't say the words Big Brother, George Orwell. <laughs> it's a fucking number. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll, and I'll get to that later. Oh, there's man. more than that. <laughs> I have five thousand words on this story. Oh my god! <laughs> like I said, I'm not a journalist, <laughs> but I played one in college. <laughs> so. What are, what are they going to do? They go to Ridley Scott and they say, what can you do with $900,000? Ridley Scott directed that? Yep. That I did not know. And you know what? Shame on me. <laughs> Honestly, though, shame on me. I think a lot of people already knew that. And uh, But I know things that they don't know. <laughs> sure. Like where the bodies are buried with the leases. <laughs> Uh, Andy Hertzfeld says that Steve loved the com- he's Steve loved the commercial about being about an emotion and an experience, uh, and he said that the Mac would change the world. He like literally he thought that the the commercial was saying their their product was going to change fucking everything. He's mm-hmm. like, I love it, <laughs> mm-hmm. do it. They committed one point five million dollars for the Super Bowl, like just to buy the time. Right, right, yeah. right, right. That was yeah. a minute. You know, yeah. like that's how expensive it was back then. Yes. Like now, now it's absurd. It's yes. like fucking $5 million for th- like 30 seconds or something. Yeah. Probably dude. even more. But the problem is it's Pepsi. And so they just keep paying it. <laughs> yeah. They and can, that drives they the price up for everyone. Yeah. It's like Pepsi is kind of at the core of every advertising problem since the 90s. Is that right? Yeah, they oh. kind of went out of control. <laughs> well, now it's the you Pepsi when halftime they had... show at the Super Bowl. Well, it used to be the Pepsi halftime show at the Super Bowl. <gasps> now, what is it now? It is. It's 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 Pepsi's been branded at the Super Bowl for a while. Yeah. You, do yeah, you yeah, remember yeah. Britney Spears? Oh God, let me rack my brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is she owned by Pepsi? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I caramba. Well, yeah. I know in the 80s, yeah, Michael Jackson. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Pepsi really went forward. And, and, and like, honestly, like some people. And, and that's kind of the end of it. Like, that's this is literally the tease mm. into like what it, this thing is about. So I just wanted to s- spend this episode introducing it. Great. Introducing the little concept of the show. Shit. There's like this is one of those things where there is enough of the before, middle and after where it like almost does make this like perfect like opera yeah because yeah. there's resolution there's it's like as i say the end of it it'll be like the lord of the rings like, oh man like Gimli getting on a fucking boat <laughs> <laughs> damn well yeah if it, it's it, it all took place so long ago that we have perspective on it to be like okay and this is what it meant at the time this is what the repercussions of it now yeah, et cetera, and, et and you know people like steve wozniak and andy hertzfeld and uh Lee Clow, all the people responsible for it, like they like talking about it because it's considered a success. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get to if it was later. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Um, but and, and, and I have this one quote. I just kind of want to say it because fuck it. Cool. But uh, this one guy <laughs> talks about like that commercial. <laughs> the 1984 one? Like, no, he, he's talking about the Lisa. Oh God. Okay. And he goes, she was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. She was gorgeous and she did things that I didn't think were possible. (laughs) But in the end, I realized she was like an Eve St. Laurent model. Stunning. Yet ridiculously out of my league and hopelessly impractical to boot. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. I wanted her desperately. This is a guy. Uh, from USA Today quoting uh, someone just like a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Do you have do you have anything to say about the Lisa? Oh, finally. <laughs> finally, my thoughts can be heard. He takes out his glasses to yeah. pad oh. of his a scroll. Yeah, he opens his journal. <laughs> Put the kids to bed, honey. Yes, I know it's three in the afternoon. <laughs> I've got an interview to do with USA Today. <laughs> They want to know my thoughts on the Lisa. <laughs> Who's Lisa? You know her name. You know who she is. <laughs> She's elegant, but out of reach. <laughs> yeah, that's episode one. Yeah.
fuck, man. Catch you later. Episode two. <laughs> 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 <It> sounds great. <laughs>